Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over 3.05 metals. So we've talked about a few different patterns or trends on the periodic table, such as how many valence or outer electrons does the first group have? One. How many valence electrons or outer electrons does the second group all have? Two. And of course it keeps going. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight except for helium, which only has two, because it's so tiny, but it has a what? Full outer shell and is stable. So that's why it's in this column of noble gases. So today we're gonna talk about different groups, including metals versus non-metals. So if we look at this periodic table, it shows that metals are all these colors and the non-metals are in the green and the blue, kind of the sky blue versus the bright blue. So these are non-metals, the noble gases, and all of these are also non-metals. That means everything else is a metal. Now, what do you think of when I say metal? Well, you might think of certain types of metal, like what are some types of metal? Iron, copper, brass, gold, silver, platinum. Those are ones you might think of as metal. And how would you describe metals? Well, usually they're very shiny. I usually think of them as being very silvery in color, although obviously some aren't like gold. Gold is gold colored. Um, but those are things that we think of. Copper is copper colored. And what do we use metals for? Well, what about copper in your house? That's used for wires to conduct electricity. We use them in our cars. We use metals in a lot of things. But you might not have realized that, look, all of these elements are metals. Most of the elements are metals, and really only a few are non-metals. Then, of course, when they combine, then they can make other compounds with other properties. And that, of course, we'll be talking about more and more as we get into chemistry. But first, we want to talk specifically about the properties of some of the metals. So we are going to start with talking about the first two groups on the periodic table. So the first group is your alkali metals. So you should know that group one is called the alkali metals. Except for what element? Hydrogen because hydrogen is actually a non-metal. It's the only non-metal on this side of the periodic table. All the other non-metals are over here, but hydrogen is over here. So why is hydrogen over here if it's a non-metal? Well, because it only has one electron, so one valence electron, so it gets stuck in group number one. So all the rest of group one are called alkali metals. So make sure you write that down, alkali, metals. Here, I'll go to my note page. Alkali metals are all the elements in group one except hydrogen, which is still in group one even though it is a non-metal because, like the rest of group one elements, it has one valence electron. And then, of course, the other thing that you need to know for alkali metals is all have one valence electron. So, do you think that they are reactive, kind of reactive, not very reactive? And if you're thinking to yourself, how in the world would I know that? Well, let's think about what atoms want. So remember, all atoms want a what? What are those three words? They all want a full outer shell to be what? Stable. So what are the group one elements going to do? Are they going to lose one or are they going to gain seven? They will each lose one electron. Really want to, okay? They really, really want to lose an electron because it's just one. It's only one. It's like they're going out begging like, oh, here, I just have one. Here, somebody just take it and then I'll be... Ah, oh, stable, because I'll have a full outer shell. So they really, really want to get rid of an electron. So what do you think? Does that mean that they're reactive or not reactive? Therefore, they are really reactive. Okay, 
So, and I have some good little video clips of that. So let's look at this opening sentence here for this video. Reaction of alkaline metals with water. Water, okay. These atoms are so reactive. They are going to react with plain old water. In fact, when you store them, you can't just put them in a container. You especially can't put them in a container with water, but there's water in the air. So you actually have to keep them submerged in oil. All right, so we're gonna start off talking about the first few on the periodic table, lithium, sodium, and potassium. Now here you can see that they're actually stored in a liquid, obviously, but again, this liquid is oil. It has to be an oil because what do you know about oil and water? Do they mix or do they wanna stay separate? You know that they wanna stay separate. And if you remember from biology class last year, that has to do with hydrophobic and hydrophilic ends, like with your cell membranes. Remember how your cell membranes have the little heads and tails that go together? And so the hydrophobic, the part that hates water, hydrophilic, the part that loves water. So oil is hydrophobic. So here is a piece of lithium. And it shows you here how easy it is to slice through them. That's not a sharp knife. And once you slice through it, you can see how nice and shiny it is. So why do you think the outside is not shiny? The outside's not shiny because it's reacted with the air. It has tarnished, kind of like rust. Okay, so it's already reacted with the air, but when you first cut it, um, it's actually like butter, like uh, a little cooled butter, not quite room temperature. Um, but pretty darn close to butter and softer than butter that's in the fridge. This is sodium. Look at that. This isn't even a sharp edge. It just slices right through it. And again, you can see how shiny it is in the middle, a little bit tarnished on the edges. And you might even be able to see how it's tarnishing a little bit just from the air. This one is potassium. This one is so reactive, you cannot have it in a high school classroom. So, okay, my favorite day all year was playing with sodium. I'm sorry, not playing with sodium, showing experiments of sodium. <laughs> I could not do potassium because even as a high school teacher, it's so dangerous you can't purchase it. All right, so this is lithium and water. And if you notice, we definitely have some reaction. What can you observe for the reactions? Well, I definitely see some bubbles. And you can see that it's moving. You can see that it's fizzing. If you were around it, it'd be like And they put a little flame in there because it's giving off hydrogen gas. And the way that we can tell it's hydrogen gas is because when you put a flame near a little bit of it, it goes boop, more of a boop, but kind of more of a it's kind of a combination of those two sounds. It makes a high-pitched little whistly sound. It's kind of pretty. So it gives off hydrogen gas. So bubbles giving off a gas. It's moving around like crazy. It's giving off um, a sound. All of those are indications that a reaction is happening. So now what they're doing is they are putting in, oh, it's kind of hard to see on this one. You can tell it's turning kind of a grayish blue. But what they were putting in was an indicator to show that what's left over is a base. So again, they're putting, there you go. They're putting the fire in to show that the hydrogen's released. All right, so here we have sodium. Sodium is the next one down on the periodic table in group one. And again, you see that it's a ball. It's a spherical shape. That's because it wants to be away from the water. It's like a drop of oil. It beads up on itself and it basically dances. And here you can see that, ooh, we definitely have a darker blue. So we have a more basic, because remember bases are blue, and we have sodium hydroxide. Combined with hydrogen gas, when they put the flame there, it goes boop, and it whistles off. Now, that was a very tiny piece of sodium. We're talking smaller than your pinky fingernail, like half the size of your pinky fingernail at the biggest. Because when you get larger than that, you definitely have more reactions. So let's take a look at some bigger reactions. So again, we are reacting metals. And when they react with water, they form a metal hydroxide, which means it ends in OH, and they liberate or give off hydrogen 
gas. Reactions get more vigorous as we move down the group on the periodic table because they more readily want to give up the electrons. Remember, we talked about this. We talked about how hydrogen has one orbital, lithium has two, sodium has three orbitals. And the farther away from the protons that the valence electrons are, the harder it is for the protons to hang on to them. So they, these outer electrons really, really want to escape. They're going crazy. And this was like when I talked about the teacher, right? The kids standing next to the teacher in elementary school, they're going to be good and they're going to stay by the teacher because the teacher can reach out and grab them. But the kid who's on the other side of the room or at the end of the line when you're going on a field trip might get lost because they're farther away from the teacher. Same thing. The electrons here, one, two, three, four, five orbitals away from the positive protons are more likely to escape. All right, so again, lithium, even when you have a decent sized chunk of a lithium, you can see the hydrogen and guess what? Yeah, it starts on fire. It is so reactive, it starts on fire. When I did sodium in the classroom, if you put a chunk into a beaker, of water and that chunk is about the size of your pinky fingernail sometimes that is enough to shatter shatter the beaker it sounds like a gunshot going off it explodes the entire beaker it's crazy and sparks flying and obviously very dangerous again definitely my favorite day <laughs> all right so here it shows it in slow motion you can see this huge mess that it makes yeah it is a huge mess to clean up and notice how it's instantaneous. That's how badly those electrons want to get out of there. Okay, so if you have a huge chunk, which you can't even buy, first of all, this is terrible for the environment because what is it producing? It's producing a lot of base, which is going to kill the fish and the plants in here. So I am definitely not, not, not suggesting anyone does this. However, since somebody did and it was filmed, I will show you. Yeah, you can see the strength of that. It's crazy. It's crazy. So that's sodium. Okay. And to get sodium, you can't just go to Walmart and get sodium. You have to have be in a school, chemical degree, all that stuff. Here's potassium, a little tiny piece. And like I said, potassium, you can't even get as a high school teacher. So that's how dangerous it is because it's so reactive because it so badly wants to get rid of that outer electron. And rubidium, they don't even have a real picture of that because it's so dangerous. People don't do that. All right, so let's add this to our notes. Must be stored in oil because it can even react with the water in the air. Start on fire and water because of how badly they want to lose the valence or outer electron. More reactive as you go down the periodic table. Okay, so lithium is the least reactive, sodium is more, potassium is even more reactive because the valence electron is farther from the pull of the positive protons, so it can escape more easily. So pretty exciting about what it can do. I want to add a few more things to our notes. So I want to make sure that you add that it is soft, like butter. And I hate going back into your notes, but I thought maybe just make a little line and add in the valence electron, because sometimes when we use it in chemistry class, I forget that it's, sometimes it's hard to lose track of what the pronoun is referring to. So it, meaning the valence electron, can escape more easily. And the other thing I wanted to add when reacting with water, it gives off, do you remember what kind of gas? Hydrogen gas. And leaves what type, an acid or a base, in the rest of the water? It leaves a base, like sodium hydroxide. And we're going to talk a lot more about acids and bases later on, but I wanted to add those in. All right, next we are going to talk about alkaline earth metals. You can write this down and I will start the rest in the next video clip because we're out of time on this one.